I mean, you've got the pandemic going on. You've got economic crisis going on. You've got the spirit of division and racism going on. And I'm, I'm sure that Satan's just sitting back like, I got him, I got him, I got him. But I got to tell you, in the name of Jesus, the Bible says God sits in heaven and he laughs. Why? Because he knows that, he knows that that devil's end is, is right around the corner. See that you be not troubled in the midst of all this trouble. Some of you have been so stressed out. Some of you have just, man, this is just too much. Some of you are like, I just can't look at news anymore. It's just like the whole world's going crazy. And then in the middle of this, he says, see that you be not troubled. Now, let me show you something right quick in order for us to answer that question. Go to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Let's look at the King James and then the New Living Translation. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 in the King James and then the New Living Translation. See that you be not troubled. He says in verse 1, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. So I'm going to talk to you about something you have heard, but you, 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 you've drifted away from it. I'm going to talk to you about something that you know, but you kind of let it slip. You, 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 you're not aware of it right now. This is the time where you have to be aware of it. And, and, you know, I'm not trying to condemn you for letting things slip. We all let things slip. But thank God, praise Jesus, we can pick up those things we let slip and make sure that we have the right thing at this right time. Look what he says in verse, uh, uh, let's look at the New Living Translation, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 in the, in the uh, New Living Translation. So we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard, or we may drift away from it. Him and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Don't you care that she's leaving all of the work into my hands? He said, bid her, therefore, that she help me. Next verse. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. How many of you can relate to that? You're, you're careful, you're careful, you're full of care about many things. There are a lot of things going on in your life, a lot of things going on in your mind. You're focused on how I'm going to pay the rent, all my money spent, I ain't got no job, you know, a little bit to buy some food, the baby need a pair of shoes or, you know. And he says, but one thing is needful. What a powerful statement. Jesus says, one thing is needful. In the midst of all of these things that are going on, in the midst of things that are going on around you that you're concerned about, in the midst of things that are happening in your life that, you, that, 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 that you're trying to figure out, I need some help on. I mean, you know, Jesus says, there's only one thing that's needful. And so how do, I, how do I deal with everything that's going on in my life right now? How do I deal with the prospect of me not having a job? How do I deal with, 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 with my children? How do I deal with, with, with my finances? How do I pay my bills? And Jesus says, one thing is needful. Well, I don't know about you, but I certainly want to know what that one thing is. Because if that one thing is what I need, then praise God, tell me what it is. He says, one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Well, what did Mary choo choose? She chose to sit and hear the word. She chose to listen to Jesus. She chose to sit at his feet and hear his word. Basically, Jesus is saying, we are worried about a whole lot of things, but what we need to choose is the word. Every city, every state, every nation on the planet needs the Word. And Jesus is saying, if you will choose to sit and hear and choose my Word, my God, he says all these other things are going to fall in line. How powerful is this? But, you know, right here, here's Jesus saying to a woman to give your attention to the world, the Word, Martha. Give your attention to the Word. Mary is. She's chosen the needful thing. You need the Word. You need the Word. You're hearing all other opinions, and you're hearing everybody else's Word. You need the Word of Jesus. 
What are you giving your attention to? Are you giving your attention to the chaos? Are you giving your attention to the, to the trouble? Are you giving your attention to the pandemic? Are you giving your attention to the fear? What are you giving your attention to? Well, let's, let's pay attention to Jesus. Let's get in his word. Let's find out what we should be giving our attention to. He said to Martha, you should be giving your attention to what Mary's giving her attention to. So what does he say here in Proverbs 4.20? He says, my son, attend to my words. Wow. Attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. So here Jesus is saying, again, give your attention to my word. What are you programming in your mind? What are you taking through your eyes and your ears? He says, let them words not depart from your eyes. There's got to be a reason why. Keep them in the midst of your heart. There's got to be a reason why. Keep the word in the midst of your heart. Why in the world does God want me to get the word in my heart? Verse 22, he says, for they, those words, are life. They're life unto those that find them. And their health, the Word of God is health. The Word of God is health to your flesh. So the Word of God not only will be uh, something that will help us in all of these weird situations, but it will also bring health to your flesh. The Word of God. Come on, watch this. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Why? For out of your heart are the issues of life. Now he's telling me that your heart is kind of like soil. If you put the word in your heart, it'll grow the issues of life. In fact, words are seeds and, or like seeds. And, and when you put that word in your heart, it will grow the issue of that word that went in. The issue of life comes out of a man's heart. He said, put away from thee a forward or disobedient mouth. He said, watch your mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. Watch your mouth, because you can hear what you say. 25, let your eyes look right on, and, and let your eyelids look straight before thee. 26, ponder, that's meditation, ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways, let your ways be established. Let your ways be established in the word. 27, turn not to the right hand, nor to the left hand. Remove thy foot from evil. Man, this is, this is strong. It's like God's trying to tell us something, that you're a Christian, you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, and you're experiencing, you know, things just as worse as the world. Some of us, not all of us, those of us who are doing this, oh my God, we, we are operating on a whole nother level. And yet it is something that will change your life, change your circumstances, change your situation, change your focus. Why? Why is he pushing the word so much? Well, let's go see. Mark chapter 4, and I'm going to read, probably teach the whole chapter. I, I've got lots to talk about. I won't finish this sermon today. I, I, I got to get the answer to you about why is this word so important? Why is getting this word so important? It's just a book. It's not just a book. It's the word that, that, that was inspired uh, by God to men. Men were inspired to write it. Holy men were inspired to write it down. And I know there are people that are against the Word of God because they say it was that Bible that was responsible for, for slavery. No, it was bad teaching. It was men that used the Bible in a manipulative, wrong way and, 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 and taught heresy to people, and they believed it, and they were made to believe it. There's nothing wrong with the Word of God when it's taught properly. But boy, when, when, when a false prophet gets it or when, when people try to teach the Word from the basis of mammon. See, back in those days of slavery, that man would teach that Bible to motivate slaves, to, to, to serve them because their money was on the line. And so it was manipulated and it was taken out of context and it was taught wrong, and they believed wrong, and submitted themselves to oppression and slavery because somebody mishandled the Word of God. That's why it's got to be handled properly. That's why it's got to be rightly divided.
to teach by the seaside, Jesus. So Jesus is in the boat teaching, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship, and he sat in the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. Jesus in the water teaching. He's in a boat or in a ship in the water teaching to those on the land. Now, verse 2. And he taught them many things by parables. So Jesus taught by using illustrations, real-life illustrations. And he said unto them in his doctrine or in his teaching. So here's what he said in his teaching that day. He said, hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. So he's, got, he's using the illustration of a farmer going out to sow some seed. Verse 4, and it came to pass, as he sowed, some of the seed fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it. And some of the seed fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell, some of the seed fell on thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. Verse 8, and others fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprang up, increased, and brought forth some 30, some 60, and some a hundred. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Or in other words, he that has perception, he that can perceive what this illustration is about, there's awesome things that will happen to them. Now remember in Genesis chapter 8, 22, 22 Genesis chapter 8, 22, he says, While the earth remains, Seed time and harvest, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease while the earth remains. It shall not cease. Now, I've just read to you where Jesus in this illustration was literally talking about four different types of ground. He talks about four different types of soils, four kinds of soils, here, he's speaking of four kinds of hearts. So he's comparing the four types of soils, soils to the four kinds of hearts of man. You have the hard heart. That's the first soil. You see the activity of Satan. You have the hollow heart. That's the second soil. You see the activity of the flesh. Then you have the half hearts. That's the third soil. That's the activity of the world. And then you have a whole heart. Now, basically what he is saying here is you can't take seed and put it in the ground and not have anything to cover it up. You can't take, say, take seed, put it in the ground, and it's shallow. The birds of the air come and eat it. In other words, he said the seed, whether it's going to be successful of growing or not, is going to be based on the type of soil that, was, that, that the seed was put in. Seed has to be put in the soil in order to grow. Seeds got to be put in the soil a certain way in order to grow. You see, your heart is equal to the soil. And the Word of God is equal to the seed. What he is saying is, if you'll take the Word of God, put it in the soil of your heart, it'll bring forth the harvest.